Welcome to another tutorial part of the Django channel series where we're building a chat application with Django channels and react in the last one we added a couple new things to start connecting to multiple chats so we can navigate between the chats that the user belongs to which is pretty cool but there was something wrong at the end and that's something that we're going to fix in this video which is the sending of messages in those chats so if I were to for example just send a message and send it then you can see that nothing has come out on the display and if I go into the console then we get some reconnecting taking place which means that there's something wrong on the back end so we're going to be fixing this in this video and if you want to follow along you can go to our github page to the just chat repository and come here to the commits where you'll want to go to the latest commit which is this can now connect to different chats if you just click on that then it's going to give you a commit hash and you can use this to reset the repository back to this point in the code which you can then follow along with if you clone this repository then you can just say git reset dash dash hard and then this commit hash to pull you back to this point so you can follow along so once you've got everything open in vs code you're ready to go then let's get started So we've got our back end running and our front end running and we're mainly going to be working here in the front end so if we just go into the front end and then to source then containers we're mainly going to be taking a look at the chat the web socket and the consumer which is here in the back end so inside chat consumer and we can actually pull up the model as well now currently if we just refresh this and let's just send another message as a test so we can see what happens here in the background so we'll just send that through then if we scroll up all the way to when that error starts you'll have to scroll up quite a bit but you'll eventually get to an exception which says the author is an invalid keyword argument for this function and so let's go to the consumer to see where this is taking place so here in the new message command which is what's being called when we actually send a new message here in the chat then we're grabbing the author which is coming from the from property in the data object that's being sent through and that's fine that's not what the problem is but we're probably mislabeling it as well because if you take a look at the models we got rid of the author and started renaming it as the contact so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to rename this to be the contact or in fact we could call it user contact and that's going to be the contact version of the username that's being passed into this data so let's open up the views and we're going to create a view function just to handle this for us so we'll just say define get user contact and it's going to give us a username and so first we'll need to grab the user so we'll use the get user helper for that so we just have to import from contrib.auth our get user model then at the top here we can specify our user using the get user model and then filter off of that model so we've already got the get object off of four so i'm just going to use that and we're querying the user where the username equals to the username being passed in so that's going to give us our user but now we want to get the contact corresponding to that user so i'm going to say return and we'll use the get object of 404 as well and this is going to be on the contact so we need to import contact and the query set is where the user is equal to that user that we just got now so we're getting the user and then we're getting the contact corresponding to that then we just return that and we can import this function into our consumer so now we can come down here and just wrap it around that part there so basically the username is being passed into this function and then it will return the actual instance of the contact which we can then assign as the contact of the message being created because if we take a look here at the model whenever we create a message we need to assign a contact to it but this is where the problem is coming in we're creating this message by calling message.objects.create and then passing in an author parameter which actually isn't a parameter on the model we have the contact so again we're going to need to change that and we don't need this author user command as well so we can delete that so here this is going to be the contact which is going to be the user contact that we just grabbed and then the content is still the data me or message coming through from the data so that's fine one thing that we aren't doing here is we aren't actually 
saving that message inside the chat. So we need to get the chat that is actually where we want to save this message to. So to do that, we're going to need to either pass in an extra parameter here, which will be like the chat ID or pass it in the data itself and then extract that from that object. And so doing it through the data object is probably a little bit better. So let's go here to the WebSocket and on our new chat message method here, basically we just want to add another parameter or another key here, which would be the chat ID. And we'll say that this is the message chat ID. So we'll pass it into the message itself. And so that means that in the chat, if we scroll down all the way to our send message handler, then here is the message object that's being created where we've got the username and we've got the message, but we're going to need to add the chat ID, which if you remember, we can use the parameters from the props to do that. So let's just go grab it from here and just add that in there. So now it's going to send the chat ID into the message, which is going through here in the new chat message on the WebSocket, which should then be received here in our consumer. And so if we just print out that message and we can just comment all of that out as well, then let's go all the way down in our console. We'll refresh this and I'll just send another message. And so now we see those messages come through and we can see in the console that the message is being sent. So now all we need to do is actually add this message to the chat itself. So what we can do is go into our views and we're going to create another helper, which will be the get current chat method. And this is also simply just going to take in a chat ID and it's going to return the get object of 404 of the chat where the ID equals to that chat ID being passed in. And we can then take this method into the consumer, we're going to import it all the way at the back here. And we can then uncomment all of this and we'll say, our current chat is equal to get current chat of data and then pass in chat ID to get the value of the chat ID that we're currently on or which the message should be sent on. And then we need to access the messages off of the current chat because if we could take a look at the model, the chat has messages, which is a many to many field. So to access all of them, we just say dot messages and we can say dot add to add that message into it and then we can just say current message or current chat that is dot save so that we make sure we're saving the chat with the new messages and we should be good to go so let's open up the admin here and if we take a look at the messages then the last two were not assigned to any chat so let's delete those two and now if we come back in here and just refresh the front end then let's send another test message come back into the admin We'll go to messages and there's the new message. But if we go to the chat as well, then that message is stored in there as well. All those five messages are all the five messages that we just saw over here. And if we prove it, we can just refresh the page. Then there's the new message. But what you're probably noticing is that if we send messages, we're going to get a duplicate of that message showing. And you can also see in the console that we're getting things displaying twice. For example, the WebSocket opening and the connection being made it's all happening twice. Now the reason for this is because we aren't disconnecting from the socket that we're currently connected to. So what we're going to do is on the web socket, we're going to define a new method here, which will disconnect us from the socket reference. And so we're just going to add disconnect. And all we're simply going to do is just call the socket reference and then just say dot close. And then that will close the WebSocket connection to the current connection that we have. So what we want to do is we want to take this method and we want to disconnect us from the chat once we move into a new chat. And we're going to handle this here inside the component will receive props. Now currently we're initializing the chat. And if we take a look at that method again, then what's happening is we're waiting for the socket connection. We're adding callbacks and then fetching the messages and then connecting. Now we don't actually need to do all of this again inside our component will receive props. We actually don't need to do everything so we can cut a bit of that out and paste exactly what we need here. And so actually before we even do that, what I want to do is add a conditional check to see 
if we've moved on to a different URL. So basically meaning if the props are updating, but it's not a change that involves us navigating to a new chat, then we don't want to actually call anything inside here. We only want to update the connection if we're moving to a new chat. And so we're basically checking, did the parameter chat ID in the URL, meaning this slash one, two, three, did that change? And if it did, then we will disconnect and move to a new chat. So basically we're just going to check if our props dot match parameters dot chat ID is equal to the new props version of this. So meaning the new props is going to show us the new URL that we've navigated to, whereas this dot props is the current URL that we're on. So if we add that there, we can check is the new URL equal to or different to the current URL. If it's not equal to, so meaning we've changed URLs, then we will disconnect from the socket. So we'll say the WebSocket instance dot disconnect. So meaning we're calling our disconnect method here. And then we can wait for the socket connection to take place while also calling the connect on the new URL. So we're just going to grab this from up top here in the initialized chat. You can actually just grab everything from there and we'll come back down, paste everything in there. So we're waiting for the socket connection, but then we're not going to add callbacks because we've already done that. So we can get rid of that. We are going to fetch the messages though, and we are going to connect to the new props chat ID. So we're going to add that in there, just like that. And we're going to add it inside there as well. So now if we take a look at this in the browser, let's refresh this. So now we see that that's only being logged out once. I'm going to send another message and we see that that's only outputting once. Let's go to another chat and we'll send some more messages. We can go back to the other one and we can see that it's working. So now our messages are correctly loading. They're not sending duplicates and we're correctly connecting to the socket depending on whether we've actually changed URL or not. We're not just calling it simply when the props are updating. And so this was something important to fix in this lesson. So now we've actually sorted that out. And overall, the project seems to be a lot more functional now. So if you enjoyed the video, let us know what you thought. Leave a comment down below. Let us know if there's anything else you want to add into this series or you want to see implemented. And otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. So I just wanted to end off this video by showing you a demo of the latest project that has just been added to the Just Django website. And this is what's called the Django Journal, which is basically an advanced blog application as built purely with React and Firebase. And there's a whole story as to why this application was built and you can check that out on the site. And so I just want to give you a quick demo of this application to show you what it's all about. So we can go ahead and log in. I'm gonna log in with Google and this is gonna open up a tab for me to log in with my selected accounts. So I can select the account that I want to log in with and then we are logged in. Now only paid users can actually create articles. So we're going to have to pay a monthly subscription fee to be a user of the site that can create an article. So we can come and select our user membership and go ahead with the payment, which is done and handled with Stripe. Cool, so now that the membership is created, we can actually go ahead and create an article and this is using what's called a what you see is what you get editor. And we can come in here and create these really fancy and detailed posts with videos and images and all this stuff. So let's go ahead and enter a test post title there. And this is a test slug as the slug of this. And let's just go and click create. Now if we come to our home page, we can see the articles here and we can check it out. And so we can interact with this, we can comment, we can upvote it with either a downvote or an upvote. We can favorite it. So let's go ahead and interact with it a little bit. We'll favorite it and like it. And we'll add a test comment as well. And we'll submit this and there we go. And so we can keep track of this as well. We can go to our profile and we can see all of the information here on our profile. We can see what we've commented on. We can see where we voted what articles we've created and the actual details of those articles. And we can delete them as well. We can get rid of them if we really don't want to. And we can actually keep track of all this information inside Firebase. 
We can keep track of all the users that have been created. We can see all the members who've actually paid for memberships. We can see who's favorited, who's commented, who's voted, and of course, all the articles that have been created as well. And so if you want to learn more about this application and see what was used to actually make it, then head over to the Just Django website and you can see all about it. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.